There's a real problem on the Democratic side right now. They know Republicans next year can redraw districts in a majority of states in this country and win the House of Representatives. There are six seats that separate the Republicans and the Democrats from control. Let me give you the legislative control right now. Just so you understand, uh, in legislatures, the Republicans control the complete legislatures of Alaska. I'm doing the map now, just so you understand, from the National Council of State Legislatures. Alaska, Montana, North Dakota, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, New Hampshire, Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Missouri, Kentucky, West Virginia, Utah, Kansas, Arkansas, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Arizona, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, and Florida. The Republicans control the majority of state legislatures in this country, both houses. Minnesota is the only split state in the country. The Republicans control the state Senate. The Democrats control the state house. Of these, of these Republicans control outright almost all of the state legislatures with governor's mansions. So consider, for example, in Wisconsin, the Republicans control the state legislature. The governor controls the executive. The governor can wield a veto, but then the state Supreme Court can protect the Republicans. In Michigan, the Republicans control the state legislature, but not the governor's mansion. In Pennsylvania, Republicans control the legislature, not the governor's mansion. In Vermont, Massachusetts, and Maryland, the Democrats control the legislature, but it's the Republicans who wield the veto pen. In North Carolina, the Republicans control the legislature, but the Democrat controls the governor's mansion, but he is precluded from being able to veto uh, a, a state. So consider Kentucky and Kansas and North Carolina. Kentucky, Kansas, and North Carolina have Democratic governors right now. But in North Carolina, the governor has no ability to veto redistricting. And in Kentucky and Kansas, the Republicans have supermajorities of the legislature, so if the governor vetoes it, they can override it. In California and Iowa, redistricting has been outsourced to a nonpartisan panel, the same in Colorado as well, where the Democrats control everything but redistricting. In Arizona, Republicans control the state legislature and the governor's mansion. They'll be not picking up a seat, but they will be dealing with demographic shifts. In Texas, Republicans control everything. and It'll be picking up two seats. In Florida, Republicans control everything. It'll be picking up a seat. In Montana, Republicans control everything. It'll be picking up a seat. Yes, Democrats will be picking up some seats, but fewer than the Republicans. In New Hampshire, the Republicans just took over everything. They have control of everything. They'll be able to get rid of Democrats. The Democrats know this. They know that this is the environment they're headed into in 2022. Likewise, according to Axios, oil prices have continued to rise, gaining again on Tuesday after rising to the highest in two years on Monday. Inflation worries and concerns that prices have run past reasonable valuations, have weighed on equities recently, but bullish oil traders continue to be handsomely rewarded this year. Prices for diesel are up 39.6% year-to-date. Crude oil up 36.6% to date. Gasoline up 53.2% to date. They've all delivered strong returns along with the stock prices for ExxonMobil, Chevron, and Occidental Petroleum. The S&P 500 Energy Index has by far the best performing of the index's 11 sectors. Rising oil prices, though, are a major concern for businesses and a common pain point for consumers, especially in recent weeks. The Democrats head into an election cycle with energy increases, which will cause inflationary prices for consumer and retail prices, and Democrats keep trending on. There is a list the Democrats have put out, or the Republicans have put out, of targeted districts. You know one of the people who's targeted? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is being targeted, not by the Republicans. She's being targeted by Democrats in New York. 
They can't decide whether they like she's kind of the in the Marjorie Taylor Greene situation. They can't decide should they keep her in the house and draw her a comfortable district or should they draw her a painful district that forces her out of the house. Uh, they're still bitter that she chased off Amazon from New York. I mentioned in the first hour of the program today that though Joe Biden won a state like New Hampshire and a state like Georgia, the Republicans will control all the redistricting lines, and the Republicans are looking at uh, causing Democrats to be drawn into districts together to fight while giving Republicans safe and more partisan Republican districts. And their Democrats are going to do the same in places like Maryland, but they can't do that everywhere they would like because, for example, in Massachusetts, they've got a Republican governor. In um, in Maryland, they got a Republican governor, but he's amenable to the Democrats protecting themselves. The Democrats are in a tough, tough reelection fight in a tough economic fight to come. They keep telling themselves that good times are here. Joe Biden yesterday said that good times are on the way again, that the economy is growing. Pay no attention to the jobs report. That's It's just an anomaly, and, and the good times are here. But it's not. 